redeemed, rehabilitated, and real entertaining. This is the Carl Jackson Podcast. All right, welcome to this edition of the Carl Jackson Show Podcast. This is your daily dose of objective truth in a world of confusion and lies. Before I go on, I want to make sure that I introduce you to my sponsors, Mike Lindale, MyPillow.com. Have a new pillow out, MyPillow 2.0. All you have to do is go to the my, MyPillow.com, click on the radio listener square at the top of the page and enter my name, Carl, uh, in that uh, in that square, and you'll get a, a discount for not only that product, but many more MyPillow products uh, that are featured as well. Discounts up to 70% off. You can also give them a call, 800-858-0263. Guys, I absolutely love the MyPillow. The 2.0 is even better. They've made it, uh, they put this new material over the top of the pillow that makes it even cooler, makes it even, you know, more breathable and nicer even to sleep on, if you could imagine that. Uh, So go to MyPillow.com, use the promo code Carl, or give them a call, 800-858-0263. Guys. Guys, let me ask you this question. Guys and gals, when I say guys, let me ask you this question. Is America under attack? That's the theme of this podcast. All right, so now, listen, let me, I just want you guys, those in my listening audience, I want you to be prepared for worst case scenarios. I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but a lot of the things that we thought were conspiracy in the past when it came to the DOJ and the FBI, well, uh, you find out those things are becoming true. We're living in crazy town, and, and I just want you to be prepared, not to mention the economy is going to get worse. Uh, it, 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 it's going to happen. I'm, I'm not saying this to scare you. I want you to be aware. I want you to, uh, I want you to prepare. It's as simple as that. A food shortage could be coming, even right here in the U.S., you look at Turkey and Syria, you got about 35,000 people estimated dead at this point. You never know what could happen. Drought, inflation, even the new policies, Biden's policies uh, could make the food supply uh, take it near its breaking point. That's why survival food is so important. I want to introduce you to fourpatriots.com, the number four patriots.com. It's the ultimate survival food. It lasts for 25 years. It's the super survival food. All right. It's hand packed in a family owned facility right here in the USA. They provide 200 jobs. The kits are compact. They're sturdy. Uh, the kits are water resistant and they stack easily for storage. They have different uh, delicious meals for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. They're ready in 20 minutes. All you have to do is add boiling water, simmer and serve and for my listeners right now, if you go to fourpatriots.com, the number fourpatriots.com, use the promo code Carl, you'll get 10% off of your first purchase, including a three month survival kit. You'll get a year long guarantee plus free shipping on orders that are over 97 buckaroonies. And by the way, they're called Four Patriots, the number four patriots.com, because a portion of every sale is donated to charities that help out veterans and their families. So not only do you get to protect and bless your family, you get to uh, you get to bless the uh, the uh, you get to bless veterans and their family members. So go to the go to the number four patriots. That's four patriots.com. Use the promo code Carl for 10% of uh 10% off of your first purchase. I am honored to have the next guest on with me. I've followed her for quite some time, read a lot of a lot of her works, but uh have never had her on the podcast, but uh, I'm glad that I have her on today. Carol Markowitz, uh, the a columnist for the New York Post and the author of the new book Stolen Youth how radicals are erasing innocence and indoctrinating a generation. It is available now for pre-order wherever you get your books, including Daily Wire, which is pretty cool. Carol Markowitz, welcome to the Carl Jackson Show podcast. Thank you so much for having me. All right, absolutely. Now, Carol, I, I got to ask you this, because I remember actually hearing you on Clay and Buck's show, and you talked about you moved from, I'm in Florida, I moved from Los Angeles mm-hmm. to Florida. You moved from New York to Florida. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. About a year ago, uh, January uh, last year, and we made the move um, like so many people. Uh, It's been amazing. And I talk and write about it a lot because it's been sort of a big thing for us, obviously. But also I'm a New York Post columnist who never thought she would ever leave New York, grew up in New York. My husband grew up in New York. We were going to raise our kids as New Yorkers. And then everything fell apart. And it's important to pay attention to why. You know, it's it's funny because I'm I'm just I gotta admit, Carol, I'm listening to you, 
And I think for the first time, I picked up a little bit of the New York accent. <laughs> That's never. Oh, no. <laughs> I definitely have one. I tone it down. I really do. <laughs> I never really heard it before, but I don't know why. I just heard yeah. it so, so clearly. So I'm glad the transition has gone well for you. But uh, talk to us about the, the decision that went behind that. How difficult was that for, for yourself, for your kids? uprooting your kids so it was it was a really difficult call because we had moved into our dream house in march 2020 which is a funny timing um we had such a life plan where everything was just ready for us and set up and our families are there and 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 so much um of what we love was there but when COVID hit uh it exposed so many things that we could no longer ignore and the way the kids were treated were at the top of the list for us um Like, I think if it were just my husband and I, we would have just suffered through the COVID restrictions and and dealt with the insanity that came along with it. But we saw so many damaging things being done to children and New Yorkers didn't care, which was the worst part. It wasn't what the government was doing. It's that my fellow New Yorkers who I'd always seen as really tough and and brave and bad. And um, I I, suddenly they were they were silent and afraid and they didn't speak up for anybody. And it, it was really hard to watch. Have you let me, let me ask you this as far as your adult life is concerned have you have you always been or lean conservative or or, or were yeah. you a liberal or was there a transition? <laughs> so I was born in the Soviet Union. And as I like oh, to say, okay. you don't leave the Soviet Union, get to freedom and become a liberal. So I, I, was, <laughs> I love that. Always pretty conservative. Um, I would say. You know, probably in college, I had a brief, I I wouldn't even say I was ever a liberal. I was, I I might have just been like a contrarian, like, is America really that great? And then I was like, yeah, America is really that great. So (laughs) Cool. Okay. All right. Now, the reason why I brought you on is you wrote this column and it's been a few weeks back and uh, I am going to ask you to uh, just, I'd love to hear your take on some of the issues of the day, but the specific reason in which I brought you on was this column that you wrote, tell your kids marriage is more important than money or career. Uh, because it is. And frankly, this was even convicting to, I believe this, but it was even mm-hmm. convicting, uh, frankly, for me to read. And I had to re-examine uh, some of my own thinking and habits that I've yeah. developed uh, over over the years. But I, I, I do understand this, and I'm going to get your take on this, Carol. Uh, the easiest way to destroy Western civilization is to undermine yes. traditional marriage and and, okay. and the family. Mm-hmm. You're absolutely right. So it's funny that you you mentioned that. Um, like I said in college, I had you know m- m- my brief uh, moment of not being conservative. I would say maybe, um, but I found recently a paper that I wrote in college, and I remember thinking to myself that I just have to say whatever the teachers want. And the paper was how the family was an outdated concept, and obviously wow. I got an A. Um, <laughs> that's exactly what the teacher wanted to hear. Uh, but that's the kind of thing that is being taught to our kids. And, and being indoctrinated in that way. I don't remember ever thinking that I, I was getting indoctrinated, but now looking at this paper and seeing that I got an A on this ridiculousness, um, you know, really showed me something. So I, I think you're absolutely right that targeting the family is the way to bring down Western civilization. And they're absolutely doing that. And we, we need to stop it. Um, so in this piece, I, if you want to get uh, into it, but uh, yes. the There was a Pew study that showed that parents preferred by quite a lot that their kids um, are happy in their job or financially secure to them getting married and having children. And the main thing that I want people to realize is those two things are very related. Um, Getting married and having children is a path to financial success and being happy at your job. Those two things are just, they're conjoined in our society. Uh, Married people make more money, both men and women. Um, And it's not a coincidence. You become more settled, you become more grounded and you have something to work for. So, you know, the idea that it's one or the other is ridiculous. If you want to be financially successful, if you want to be successful at your job, get married, have that stability. It'll take you really far. You know, there was a, uh, there was a study and I believe I, I forget the name of the liberal think tank. I don't know why I always forget the name of the liberal think tank, but also Heritage talked about it. Uh, Larry Elder would mention it all the time on his radio show as well as others. But uh, uh, if you want to be successful, uh, graduate high school, get a job, 
uh, get married, then have kids, and you're yeah. going to graduate. I mean, over 95% of the time, you're going to graduate out of poverty and at least into uh, into the middle class. Absolutely. Uh, and it's amazing to me how I, I just wonder if this is, I, I don't even know how to frame it, perhaps guilt from the left, the maybe of their own sins or this, uh, it, you know, I listen, obviously, I grew up in uh, the, the the black community. And, and I can remember in the early 80s, Carol, where even talking about divorce, then when we ran into kids that had divorced parents, we were like, dang, for real, your your parents are, are, are divorced. And I can tell you going through a transition where it did seem like, man, this person, this person, you know, all these kids growing up right. in single family homes, and there was an apartment complex where I, where uh, I lived that was even lower income, and it was basically single moms mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and their kids. So it's just fascinating to see how this stuff transpires um, and and that people don't pay attention to it. I, I, I'm afraid I'm a Christian. Even I, I feel like even in the church sometimes we don't pay attention to these social indicators. Um, That's so true. And, you know, so I'm Jewish, and in, in the Jewish community, I feel like it's um, – it, depending on how, you know, or the Orthodox Jewish community, I think that they really do promote the idea of marriage and family in, in, a, in a really uh, structured and deep way as a way, as a path to happiness, as a path to success, as a path mm -hmm. to fulfillment. Um, but I would say that the secular Jewish community of which I am a part is afraid to offend anybody. So they're afraid to say marriage is the best path because what about all the people that aren't married, you know, and, right. and, and having kids in wedlock is the best path. But what about all the people who don't have kids in wedlock? We can't be afraid to say what is you know, better. It, it, there's an obvious better path. Look, does that mean that we hate single moms or that we don't, that we, that we don't um, feel, you know, love or, or compassion for single moms? Absolutely not. It just means that there is a better path and we should encourage our children to take that path. Yeah. You know, I, um, I so part of my story is, I mean, I was a little hellion. I always had somewhat of a brain on me, Carol, but I was a little hellion growing up, got into some trouble with the law, had a child uh, out of wedlock. I'm, I'm I'm married now and my wife helped raise my, uh, my daughter. Um, but I, I would, I, I would say this because during that time I became a Christian. I also became a conservative, uh, politically. But one thing that I never did is I never threw away uh, the 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 baby with the bathwater, so to speak, mm -hmm. like I realized that I had kind of uh, that I had screwed up, frankly, uh, but I wanted a better path for my for for my child. I don't understand why people will just throw out this idea, this concept of traditional family, even though you may have grown up in a single parent home like a family, traditional family is still the best way. Is it just guilt? Why do they do that? I, I do think it's guilt I, or not guilt, but just not wanting to offend. I think that mm -hmm. the, again, the idea that one path is clearly better than the other one is something that you're not supposed to say, but it is. Uh, and, and just like, it, it's not just about, you know, marriage and family, our topic, but like you said, you know, graduating high school is better than not graduating high school right. and et, et cetera. There, there are things that are better to do for your life and for your future than, than not. Um, like uh, when you take care of yourself or when you do things for, for your, you know, I like to say like past Carol does, does things for future Carol, because that, like I, when I get, when I get to that point, I'm like, thank you. Thank you for thinking ahead about this. You know, wow. um, those are good things. And, they, not everything is not the same. That's that's the the conversation around equity and and sameness and conformity. It's things aren't supposed to all be the same. We're not all supposed to be the same. And so our paths are not all equal. They're not going to be as good as other paths. Yeah, I like that. I like that. One thing that surprised me, Carol, is when you talked about how so many the amount of parents that prefer that their kids prioritize a career over over a spouse. And I guess to to some degree, I understand you want your kid to grow up and be successful. You don't want to see your kids struggle. Uh, but I never really think of that out of the context of a family relationship, of a marriage relationship. But it, it, it kind of struck me that, I'll be honest, it surprised me that so mm -hmm. many parents do. Yeah. 
Well, so I, I think, again, the parents are not seeing the connection between a stable home and having a stable marriage and success in your career. Look, nobody wants their kid, as I wrote in the piece, nobody wants their kid living in the basement yelling up to Ma for more meatloaf. They, <laughs> they want their kid, you know, the Will, the Will Ferrell scene, right? Yeah. Um, but they want their kid to be successful. I get that. I definitely want my kids to be financially independent. I don't want to be taking care of my 40-year-old, you know, kids when they're, when they're at that age. Um, and I, I understand all that, but what they don't seem to get is that one is moves you towards the other. I, my career took off after I had my first child hmm. and I hear the story so often, especially for men, actually, when they say, when I got married, when I had a child, it focused me, it made yeah, me, so um, it made me see that my, my job is not just, you know, to, to go out on Friday nights, it's for something, it's for someone. And it, it, gave them a seriousness and a sense of purpose that they didn't have before. Yeah, um, so and, But so in, in the studies recently, so it used to be married men made the most money um, and that's still sort of the case, but um, married women are now second to that. So it used to be single women were, uh, I'm sorry, that's married men and then, then single men then single women, but because of the paths that women take, but now married women have, have, have risen because they're working and they are also have the stability of the home to fall back on. They have somebody to, to rely on. They have, they have a partner and that leads to greater success. And it also leads to greater wealth. They also save more money, which as I say in the piece, you know, despite having expensive little people that I live with, you end up saving more money as a married couple, you combine your resources and, and you thrive. Yeah, it, it makes, it makes total sense. I think it's hard to understand when you're not in uh, not in a relationship, but it, 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 I mean, once you're there, the stability that it provides, uh, yeah. it is, it is freeing. I mean, I can tell you going out, just being a little, uh, knucklehead back in the day, just, I, I didn't uh, have to account for my, my money. Even when I first got married, right. it was just like trying to figure out how to handle money better was a big mm -hmm. issue, but you figure it out. Uh, you work together to figure it out. So that's uh yeah, that's such a, such a true, uh, such a true statement. I, Carol, you've written some other pieces on this, this, this trans uh, mm -hmm. craziness. I call it trans craziness or trans nonsense. I often call it, mm -hmm. but, but I, I want to ask you this, and I'm not a, cons a conspiracy theorist to any degree whatsoever, but I, I can't help to observe what's been happening, uh, not just in the United States, but around the globe. I look at this, the trans movement. I look at the climate change, in my opinion, the climate change hoax. I look at this, let's empower women while we're empowering men that pretend to be women. And I'm like, is this just an effort by these like global elites to just kind of depopulate uh, the, uh, the, the, the globe? I mean, does that make sense? I hope I'm not sounding too crazy, no. but but yeah. I just think about this stuff. Well, so what's interesting about the trans thing is that it's actually not a global movement. If you look at Europe, they're not experiencing the same trans spike that we are. And neither is, you know, Asia or Africa, et cetera, which says to me that it's a social contagion happening only in America. You know, Britain had a little bit of this and and they no longer do. So it's, it's really, um, you, you could see that it's, it's happening because of social media. It's happening because of influence. And frankly, I think in America, it's happening because of our whole check your privilege thing. Well, when you're checking your privilege and you realize you have too much privilege and maybe you're, you, you don't have anything in your background to say that you've had a tough life, suddenly you can be LGBTQ plus minus right. you know, division sign and, and you can, and you can be, uh, you know, oppressed, you can now be a part of the oppressed class. So it's an easy in to that, you know, um, status symbol, but you're not wrong that, you know, the elites have plans for us that we wouldn't want. And a lot of this, the whole destruction of the family, the girls are not, you know, real boys are not real. This can change from day to day. All of that is, is related to keeping us in a very narrow confine where we're not allowed to speak outside of that and you're not allowed to have ideas outside of that. It's very conformist. And um, in our upcoming book, Stolen Youth, the, we open with a chapter on history and how um, in history, uh, totalitarian societies have done the same thing. They've focused on 
conforming, making the children conform and making the children have very only limited ideas exposed to them and only the right ideas were allowed and how that influenced their parents and how that influenced society and how that became a way to get to the family and, and get their ideas through the family. Uh, before I got a few more questions uh, for you, Carol, but before you go, I, w- I do want to make sure that you give out your information where the, for people that want to be able to find you online. And again, I am encouraging you to go out and uh, get her new book. I think it's available March 7th. Am I wrong? March 7th, yep. But, but it is available for pre-order as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that is Stolen Youth, How Radicals Are Erasing Innocence and Indoctrinating uh, a Generation. How can people find you online, Carol? Um, I'm on Twitter at just my first name at K A R O L. Um, Man, that's Facebook. when you know you're big, Carol. When all <laughs> you have to use is your first name. Oh right. my God, I love that. All right, um, okay. yeah. So that's uh, Twitter. Twitter is probably my best way to reach me. Uh, my DMs are open. I'm always looking for tips and ideas, and I'm, you know, I'm happy to hear from people. Cool, cool. Okay, all right. Now I, I have uh, I have this question. Um, one of the things that it, it strikes me that the left is doing when it comes to this, I, I don't, I don't even know what to call it. New frame it, new feminist movement. Mm-hmm. Uh, women are empowered. Women should just kind of focus on the, uh, the, the workforce. And, and I sit there and think, man, how many of these women are going to regret this 20, 30 years down the line? Cause they forget that they uh, seem, they have a biological clock. I, I, I can yeah. remember specifically dealing with a client of mine uh, who was very a very successful uh, lady financially, nice home, nice car. She had it all. And I remember having a conversation with her where I was, I, I just, I, I, I don't know why or how I got the boldness to say it, but I was just like, I'm, I'm shocked that you never get married. Mm-hmm. I remember telling her and she said, you know, I was so focused on my career and being successful. I, I, I didn't even think much about it. And now she was like, I, I fear, I fear it might be too late. Mm-hmm. And um, I felt so bad for her because I sat there thinking nice house, a house that was way too big for her alone, uh, mm-hmm. car, all this nice neighborhood, all this kind of stuff. But I'm like, she's going to be completely lonely. Yeah. I have all the money in the world, but completely lonely. So it's funny because, you know, the, the whole conspiracy theories of what elites are doing to us, but you know, it's a good thing for a woman to have a career. It's a good thing for her to pursue, um, you know, a, a path, uh, you know, outside of just uh, romantic. I, I absolutely agree with that. But where was the career woman going to meet her spouse? And that for generations, it was at work. It was at work. And now that's not allowed. Great You're point. no longer allowed to meet your spouse at work. They're not allowed to ask you out, you know, especially if you happen to be at, at different stages of your career you're absolutely not allowed to date. Um, but even at the same stage, you, you know, HR companies preclude any kind of relationships happening at work. But that is traditionally where people met. That was the number one place that people met for generations. Um, and now that can't happen. So it's interesting. I, you know, I, is it a conspiracy theory? But it, it has ended that path for women. And, you know, if you, you're working long hours and you're in your 20s and you're trying to get your career going, where are you supposed to meet somebody other than at work? And I think if we want to get to where a woman can have a career and get married, I think those kinds of restrictions need to be lifted. That has to be a priority for women, not for men, whatever, like, but for women, that has to be a priority. If you want to meet a, a gainfully employed man, you know where you meet him at work. Yeah, I I wonder how difficult that is. Uh, that's going to be to do when when you're taught that uh, men are are toxic and I, I I mean it's I I totally agree with you and obviously those uh, you you know your your research but I, I'm just like man the society has become so woke and all of the indoctrination that a lot of these people are being fed uh, in college and via media and and yeah. everything else I, I feel like it makes it so much more so much more difficult for even. Uh, corporations to kind of lighten that uh, you know, some of the restrictions that they have, so people can flirt, so people can right. date on on the job. It's a uh, it, it it's just crazy how far left I've seen this country go, and it really is getting to a point where it's disconcerting. And I'm always back to this. Uh, um, uh, man, I forgot what I was about to say, Carol. Oh, just the undermining of Western civilization through yeah. family. It just always, it's always funny to me how it seemed to always come back to that, the traditional family. 
Right. And, and again, this is not the first time in history. If you look at Soviet society, if you look at Chinese society, if you look at any of these totalitarian societies, breaking apart the family is step one in the indoctrination process, because you can't have a, a, an intact family where they get to discuss whatever they want at night um, without, you know, without having uh, the, the, your message not permeate. And again, the first chapter in our book was so important to us that people understand that what's happening today is not new. It is not unique. It is not the first time in history that the family has been separated in this way. It, 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 it's happened in so many different different societies. We need to recognize it. We need to fight it. And the difference between us and the totalitarian societies of the past is that you are not going to be taken away to prison because you tell your kids the truth. You might get shunned on your Facebook group, but that's not quite the same thing. So while you still have that freedom, fight for your children, fight for your family, and, and don't let anybody tell you what you can and cannot say. Man, such a such a great point. So well said. Uh, just a, a couple of bullet points, and then I'll let you go here, Carol. Uh, you talk about in this column the myth of having it all. And again, I'm speaking to Carol uh, Markowitz. She's a New York Post columnist. Go out and get her uh, book. You can pre-order it. Uh, Stolen Youth, How Radicals Are Erasing Innocence and Indoctrinating a Generation. Uh, Carol, I read you all the time. I definitely admire you from afar now uh, in an interview. I absolutely love speaking. Well, now that I know you're in Florida, we're going to hang out all the time. Hey, man, <laughs> I absolutely, absolutely love it. All right. So here you talk about the myth of having it all. You write in the column, putting money or career first doesn't work. Uh, you can't, quote unquote, have it all, but you can have most of it if you're in a stable relationship. Respond to that, if you would. So the idea that you can have, you can be CEO of a company and show up at your kids, you know, every event at their school and every like volunteer opportunity. And you could all, and you also have a, a, an amazing group of friends and you also have a, a great relationship and you also manage to like work out and take care of your house and all of that. It's impossible to do all of that at a very high level. So don't try to have it all. Try to have it most. Most of it you can have when it starts with a stable relationship because when you have a combining of resources, when you have somebody who has your back, when you have the, the stability to lean into, a lot of the other things become easier. You go to the kids' school today to volunteer, and I'll go to my job. Or you take, right. you know, you deal with the house today, and I'll I'll do this. When you have the division of resources, just having another person that you can count on is so important. And I think seeing things as, oh, I want my kids to be successful at their jobs, and I don't care about them getting married and having kids, is so myopic. And it's it's beyond just being an existential threat to our society, it's not going to work for your family. It's not actually going to happen the way that you think it will. They won't become CEO. Most CEOs are married, and that's not a coincidence. Hmm. This is, uh, I want, you just tied it together, but I just want to offer clarification for the listening audience. Uh, basically, you say a married woman has options. I, I got to tell you this, let me just read it because this sentence was so simple and so profound. I was like, Oh yeah, no crap, cream lock. Uh, it, it hit me like a ton of bricks. You said beyond just the cash, a married woman has options. The question, quote, will you go back to uh, go back to work, close quote, uh, that a woman gets asked after having a baby is not posed to a single uh, single uh, women. And I just sat there and th thought, oh, my God, she's so right. This is so simple. And this is the way it needs to be framed to some of these uh, left wing radicals. Right. It's a standard question for married women. You have a baby. Even if you have a really good job, people will say, are you going back to work? Because maybe you're not. Maybe you're going to take a few years off and hang out with your kid and, and raise them and, and, and be around for those early years. Um, it's also a question not asked to men very often, right? Uh, it's just, it's a, it's a different path. And so if you're a woman and you're thinking that marriage is going to end your choices, well, here's an example where only married women get this choice. Only coupled women um, get the option to possibly stay home with their child in the Such first few years. Such a great point. Such a great point. The last thing, uh, Carol, and Carol, if you will just hold on until we make sure we upload uh, sure. The, the video after this. But um, it kind of goes to who's going to miss you when you're gone, that uh, common cliche you, you, you wrote about. It. No one on social media, no one's going to probably know. Uh, that that you die no one is going your right. work colleagues aren't necessarily going to care at least not for long uh, but yeah. certainly your family will that's what's going to matter at the, at the end Right. I think that's so important because I think so much of our lives are spent online. And look, I'm a Twitter addict. I have like 145,000 followers around there. Um, 
And if I died tomorrow, they'd be like, wow, that's super sad. Okay, back to like the news of the day, retweet. <laughs> I have a good yeah, relationship that. with my followers. I, I'm close with some of them. I, it, it's true, and I, I'm friends with some of them. Um, but they're not going to miss me. They're not going to hurt. They're not going to even feel like anything like my family is going to feel. And that's what you have to understand. The people who live their lives online, as I do also, that – Yes, it's real because it, you spend your time there and you do make connections and all of that's real. But what's actually real, what really matters is what's happening in your home and who you spend your life with. And that's not the people on the Internet. Man, I absolutely I, I love that. You know, I was going to talk to you about Ukraine too, Carol, but we'll have to save that for another <laughs> oh, <good>. day. <laughs> I, wanna, I want people to marinate on this uh, podcast. Listen, it's been a, a, a pleasure. Uh, speaking you so with much. you really have I will continue to read your columns and I'm sure many of you will as well and and please share her work with others and go out and get her new book Stolen Youth How Radicals Are Erasing Innocence and Indoctrinating a Generation Carol Markowitz thank you so much for joining thank me on so the Carl much. Jackson thank Show you. podcast until next time guys I appreciate you tuning in please follow me on social media uh, the Carl Jackson Show Instagram Twitter Facebook get her truth social uh, please subscribe to my podcast, The Carl Jack. Actually, YouTube.com. Please subscribe at YouTube.com. That's where we need to see more of you. And wherever else you get your podcast, TheCarlJacksonShow.com. Until next time, don't go worry, doing good. God bless you.